The RTX 4090 is looking beefy. Apple wants you to peek behind their curtain and Valve fixes the problem. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're going to start off today talking about the next generation of GPUs because now we have more data coming out about the Ada Loveless GPUs that are supposed to be the RTX 40 series cards, thanks to the hackers that have their hands on all of NVIDIA's data. On top of that, we also have more details about the hackers' demands, but it does look like NVIDIA is changing some key things about their next generation cards in order to catch up with some improvements AMD has made. And especially when it comes to just raw gaming performance, AMD does have at least a slight lead. So if we take a look at the next generation cards, if we look at their anticipated performance, given the clock speed staying the same from the current generation to the next one, the lower end cards like let's say your RTX 4050, 4060, 4070, those will be about 20 to 25 5% faster than the current generation. The higher end chips that are going to use the 8103 chip are expected to be about 40% faster. And then the highest end bad boys, which we've already talked about, may have up to a 750 to 800 watt power draw. Those are looking to be potentially up to 71% faster than what's currently on the market. This appears to line up with a lot of the behind the scenes information that we've been hearing that NVIDIA's next gen, their RTX 4090 flagship is supposed to blow the current generation out of the water. And part of this is because they're going to be increasing the L2 cache sizes like AMD has done on their GPU. So it does look like the highest end cards are going to have 96 megabytes of L2 cache. The 8103 and 8104 are supposed to have 64 and the 8106 will have 48 megabytes, which is just absolutely huge compared to what's currently out there. So obviously take this with a grain of salt, but this information does appear to be coming out because because hackers got into NVIDIA systems and have taken the data and now are reporting it to regular outlets. What do you think of this GPU if, let's say the 4090 is 70% faster than the current gen 3090, does that get you excited at all? Or are you just like, listen, it's gonna cost like $85,000. Who even freaking cares? Let me know down below in the comments. And the hackers who have taken NVIDIA's data have let them know what their demands are. Number one, they're not looking to demand this from NVIDIA, but they're looking to sell the LH are mining bypass, which actually allows people to unlock their GPUs to mine at full potential for a cool $1 million. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense to actually buy at that price, considering that there already are some LHR unlocks that get you really close to peak performance. And the only people who would pay a million dollars are the people who have gigantic mining operations who are the least affected by the LHR lockdowns that's on the GPUs. So this is kind of a weird demand, but they're making it regardless. However, they're also also making the demand that NVIDIA open source all of their drivers, whether it be on Windows, Mac, or Linux. They want NVIDIA to be more clear and be more useful and helpful to the end consumer with their drivers, or at least that's what they're saying publicly. And if they don't comply, they're going to release a lot more data to the public, especially things that might be more trade secrets with NVIDIA. So the hacking organization has said that they've evaluated their position, NVIDIA's, which may mean that NVIDIA has contact them, and they think that they want this to be their demand, and they have have until Friday for them to decide whether or not they actually want to meet the demands of the hacking group and provide all of the details that they're looking for. Would you support NVIDIA's open source drivers? I think a lot of people would, even if NVIDIA did this out of the goodness of their heart. I think it would be listed as a pro-consumer move. And so, it, I mean, isn't this kind of a win-win? Like, NVIDIA doesn't get their details leaked and then freaking they, uh, they do uh, right by the consumer. I don't know. Let me know what you think down below in those comments. I'm going to let you know how the crypto stunks are doing uh, down 0.01%, 0.01%. So it's exactly the same Bitcoin, at least what as what it was yesterday. Ethereum up 0.15% to be at 2946 and Dogecoin up 0.36%, the biggest gainer on the day to be at 13.2 cents. But Ford is looking to gain on all of the other electric car companies that are out there by splitting their internal combustion engine division and their electric vehicle division into two separate divisions within their company. So they're going to have 
have their Model E, which is that it makes sense because they're Ford, but they're going to have a Model E division, which will help them to scale up their electric vehicle operations, especially with the success of the Mustang Mach-E, the anticipated success of the F-150 Lightning. It does look like Ford's on the right track when it comes to its electric vehicles, and they're going to have people who are already part of the organization be the president and then make it so that they're actually putting all of the effort into growing their electric division. And it looks like AMD, ARM, and Intel are looking to grow together because they're coming to back a universal standard for chiplets UCIE will allow them to actually have a standardized way of connecting chiplets together so that people who want to design SOCs or systems on chip, they could actually make their own by combining all of the parts. And then this is a pro consumer move. It's not blocking things down. It's actually really interesting to see that AMD, ARM and Intel are supporting the universal chiplet interconnect express and make it easy for die to die connections. If people actually want to design this stuff, this means that all of these companies get more money from people who want to design chips. So it's it's, it's a good consumer move and it's good capitalism, which is the best thing. Can you just shout yay capitalism? Yay capitalism. Yay capitalism. And in another hecking capitalism, Epic Games is acquiring Bandcamp. They want to give you game, games and music. They want to serve you all of that. It does seem like Epic Games is taking more of a consumer distribution platform approach to everything rather than just a video game distribution platform. But there's no report on how much they are paying for Bandcamp, but Bandcamp getting acquired by Epic Games. And Apple acquiring everybody's attention by announcing that they have a peak performance event coming out on March 8th. So next Tuesday, we're expected to see Apple unveil new hardware, not just necessarily new software, which will allow us to see hopefully the new iPhone SE, iPad Air, as well as some new Apple Silicon Macs that we've been anticipating for quite some time. And the peak performance, they spelled it with two E's because they want you to like peak. It's like maybe we will get an unveiling of the desktop versions of the Mac Pro, the iMac Pro that are going to be using the M1 Max chips. That would be neat to see. So it's a it's a play on words. It's a it's a heckin double entendre. Is that right? No, that's not right. That's not what that means. But what doesn't mean anything is Bungie's goodwill because they're just throwing it right out the window. They're announcing that Steam Deck is not going to support Destiny 2 because uh, according to Valve, they don't want to. That's the general sentiment that's out there right now. And not only are they not going to support it, but if you attempt to bypass it, they're just going to straight up ban you. According to the report, Destiny 2 is not supported for play on Steam Deck or on any system utilizing Steam Play's Proton unless Windows is installed installed and running. Players who attempt to launch Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck through SteamOS or Proton will be unable to enter the game and will be returned to their game library after some time. Players who attempt to bypass Destiny 2 incompatibility will be met with a game ban. Valve saying previously that the way that they can fix this is just sending an email that Valve can get this done. The anti-cheat can actually work on Linux. It appears that Bungie doesn't want to do this. Could this be because they're actually getting acquired by Sony and they're adopting their cross-play non-compatibility reasons that they just don't want to support it because they want all of their money to go to Sony. Who knows? I just think it's not good for the people, which stop it, Bungie. But Valve being good for the people, we reported in yesterday's episode of Hot News that the Steam Deck was experiencing some joystick drift and it turns out Valve's on it. It turns out that they can fix it in a firmware update by doing some dead zone regression and fixing the whole thing. I would like to see this. Thank you, Valve, for getting it done so quickly. It makes me even more excited and even more sad that I don't have my freaking Steam Deck. Valve, please. I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. Can I get on some list somewhere of like, at least let me know when I'm getting it? Please, Daddy, see you tomorrow.